Hey everybody, welcome to FY6. This is the first video in a video series on introduction to physics. All of the things you need to know whenever you are studying physics. Um, in this video, I want to answer the question, what is physics? So you're probably just now starting physics, just now getting into it, and you don't even really know what physics is. Well, hopefully this video will help explain that to you. Now, some of the stuff that you see on the screen here, there are probably a few diagrams that maybe you've seen, maybe you haven't seen before, some equations, a few things. Um, by the end of your study in physics, at least in the introductory to physics um, topics, you're going to know what all of this is. And I just kind of wanted to throw it out there and give you a glimpse of what the future holds for you as you study physics. But in this particular video, I just want to answer the question, what is physics? But before I do so, I'd like to introduce you to a few people who are pretty well known in the physics community, some people that you're probably going to run into every once in a while. Uh, let's start off at the top left. This guy over here, his name is Isaac Newton. He is one of your main people that you're going to learn about while you're studying physics. You're going to really look into a lot of his work. He's known for writing a bunch of really interesting equations that are really useful. Maybe you've heard of Newton's laws. He also invented this uh, telescope with the mirror inside of it. And anyway, he's kind of like the father of a lot of the physics that we do today. Maybe you've heard of Newtonian mechanics. That's him. Uh, another guy that a lot of people seem to really know, this guy over here, Albert Einstein. He created this equation. Maybe you've heard of it. E equals mc squared. Anyway, talking about how energy and mass are related. And then uh, this lady over here, maybe you've heard of her, maybe you haven't. Her name is Marie Curie. And she actually proved Einstein's theory to be true, the E equals mc squared theory. So uh, she actually proved it after he had passed away. So, you know, Albert Einstein never actually saw it get proven. But anyway, uh, then we have a few more people who are a little more modern, uh, Richard Feinbaum, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Michio Kaku, and the recently passed away Stephen Hawking. These people were more recent physicists who studied a lot more, um, I don't know, like big time universe, energy, gravitational, dark matter type things. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson really big into astrophysics. Uh, this guy on the bottom right over here, Galileo, he was actually around before Isaac Newton was, he was the guy who pretty much said that the Earth is not the center of the solar system. And he got in a little bit of trouble for that, but nonetheless, he ended up being correct. And you got a few other people here, Nikola Tesla, a lot of interesting books and documentaries written about that guy. Um, really interesting story. Uh, then down here, we got Schrodinger. He's the guy who created the Schrodinger's cat theory. If you've ever looked into that, it's... um. Pretty interesting. And uh, oh, I haven't even mentioned Niels Bohr here. Um, came up with the Bohr model of the atom. Anyway, I don't want to get into too much about all of them. Maybe one day I'll do a whole lesson on the history of physics and all the people that were involved. But these are kind of the people who started and have been continuing the study of physics and many other people outside of just these guys. These are just probably the most famous ones and girls, by the way. Um, but the main part of what they were doing is they wanted to understand the physical world. And they would ask lots of questions to understand the physical world. And let me, let me give you an example or a few examples of the questions that they would ask. Um, they would ask a lot of questions like, how do things move? Like, how are they moving? What are their patterns of movement? And they also would ask, well, why are they moving? Why are they moving in that pattern? And they also wanted to know what types of movement create effects on other types of objects or other phenomena. And what I mean by that is over here on the right, I have a, a wire with electricity flowing through it. And if you see electricity is flowing through the wire in one direction, it creates a magnetic field around that wire. And it's called the electromagnetic effect. Um, and that's one of those examples of if one thing is moving, how does it affect something else? So the electricity moving affected the magnetic field around it, which is pretty interesting. 
So you notice that they really ask a lot of questions of how did things move, why did things move, and what is the cause and effect of something moving. So when I say understanding the physical world, a lot of times it has to do with just movement. How do things move? Why do they move that way? A few examples of um, things moving. Uh, why does the moon orbit the earth? That's a question that had been asked. And a lot of people, you know, spent a lot of time figuring it out. And I pretty much Isaac Newton really was the guy that nailed that one down. Why does a ball speed up when falling? And also, how and why does electricity flow through wires? So that was another thing that was really a big deal, especially in the 1800s when they were first studying electricity. They started figuring out, well, what is the cause of electricity flowing? And why is it flowing? And they didn't just ask these questions just because they were curious. And I mean, I'm sure they were curious, but they were also asking and trying to figure out how can these things be useful to humans in their lives as well. A lot of things that are discovered in physics are extremely beneficial to the way that we live today and our understanding of the world. So, you know, it's not just a science just to know, but it's also pretty useful. Now, it says here, most all theories in physics can be represented with math and the majority with experiments. So math is kind of like a language that you learn, right? And physics uses that language a lot, and it uses math to explain a lot of things in the universe. So if you're a little comfortable with math, then physics should be something that you like. It's kind of math with a purpose. Um, if you're not that comfortable with math, there's a lot of concepts that you can just get across in your head. Um, by studying physics, but a lot of the stuff in physics, the math is sometimes pretty simple. Sometimes it's super complicated. Don't get me wrong. Some of it I don't even touch. But a lot of the math that you can do, especially the stuff that you, you learn when you first start doing physics, a lot of the math is actually pretty simple. And also experimentation is something that's really important in physics, just like all sciences. If you can do experiments, it's really helpful. So Here's kind of the process that goes on in physics a lot of the time. You have some sort of mathematical theory, and you try to experiment with that mathematical theory and see if your math is correct in your experiments. And if you can get some sort of repeatable result, then your theory usually stands until it's disproven. Now, Sometimes theories are disproven through future math equations, and sometimes they're not. A lot of them hold strong for a very, very long time. Now, every theory slash mathematical equation um, is technically a work in progress. We never really know if what we have is exactly right. If we're going to be honest and a little bit humble, physics is kind of like it's the best we can do right now. And sometimes, the work in physics is proven to not be true. Um, let me give you an example of what I mean by that. So, for example, Newtonian mechanics has been shown to not always be accurate for all moving objects, such as electrons in an atom or objects moving at the speed of light. So we had all these Newtonian mechanics, all, this, all these Isaac Newton equations, and they're really good for balls flying through the air or shooting an arrow or something like that. But when we started studying the electron around an atom, we realized that the Newtonian mechanics and the Newtonian equations don't exactly fit anymore. And so we had to come up with new equations and new understandings. And not just that, but also whenever things were moving at the speed of light, we started studying stuff like that. And we realized, well, you know, all of Isaac Newton's equations don't exactly fit. Now, for our typical everyday life and the stuff that we deal with, the Newtonian mechanics is perfectly fine. But in reality, when you get to some extreme circumstances like the extremely small, such as the electron, or the extremely fast, such as the speed of light, eh, it kind of gets a little, it's a little wobbly and may not exactly work anymore. So, you know, new math had to be discovered or done or figured out to explain different phenomena. So most of the time when people start to study physics, they study objects, motions, or mechanics, which is basically Newtonian mechanics. Um, here are some of the topics that you start to learn. You learn kinematics, which is just 
understanding the position, velocity, and the acceleration of objects is really what you're doing there. In forces, you're understanding why things move. What's the cause of something to move, which is usually some sort of force or a push or a pull. You'll learn about gravity, which is really interesting. It's one of my personal favorite topics. Um, momentum and conservation of momentum and conservation of energy and mechanical energy and energy transferring. All of these different topics are very, very interesting to learn about, obviously. But all of these topics and all of these, you know, motion and mechanics, and all these things, they're really all broken down to just three things. Believe it or not, only three things. So everything in mechanics can be broken down into three different quantities. The first one is length, how far, how long, or, you know, how whatever, any sort of measurement of length is really important when you're studying motion. The other one is mass, how, how much mass does that object hold? And the last one is time. So when you start to learn physics, and especially in the motion category, these three things are the most important things that you're going to need to know. Actually, really everything builds off of length, mass, and time. So you, if you have a good understanding of length, mass, and time, then you're really set up good in the future for your future physics studies. So with that said, the next video is about length, mass, and time. So tune in for that.